it to the effect of, of having no effective date. And it's all perfectly lawful, legal. Now, in our case, and this is very rare, it's extremely rare. In fact, I would say to you it is unprecedented that there has existed a form of law parallel to the Roman cult that provides sufficient detail for the effective administration of trusts and estates. It has simply never been done. Either you nominate the statutes of a Roman settlement or you scribble down some rules of administration in a will, which of course a constitution is an example of a will in which the rules of administration to some extent are listed. Now, UK cops a lot of flack from a lot of different angles in terms of what is behind the cannons. What right are these cannons? What is the effect of these cannons? We don't need these cannons, we just need this. All, everything we need is in a, in a book called King James Bible, whatever. There are people saying all kinds of things about the cannons. But I will give you one practical example of the use of cannons. The canons of law, Astrum Eurus Canonum, the canons of one heaven, are a perfect set of rules of administration for the administration of trusts. Go and have a look, because we're going to go through in a moment on warrants. Go and have a look at the canons of positive law on one one hyphen heaven.org. Just go and have a look at that index. That is as comprehensive as any rules of administration you will see in any trust handbook there in front of you. So if you want to write an effective will that prevents the Roman cult from stealing your estate, from corrupting your intent, one only needs to refer to the rules of one heaven, the canons of one heaven as the rules of administration, and they cannot screw with your will. And the proof of how important this fourth key part of a will is, is the fact that it is never included. It is conspicuously absent when wills are created. So they are the key components of what makes an effective will. Well, what makes a defective will? And I think this is important to cover. What makes a defective will? Well, first and foremost, and I would suggest, and this is something to reflect on when we talk about ecclesiastical deed polls, the first mistake with wills and testament is calling the will anything other than a will and testament. On one hand, one could argue that the ecclesiastical deed poll is every bit as clear as what I've just described in terms of a will and testament. And when you have gone, and many of you have gone out and produced your ecclesiastical deed polls, in the first instance, it was for a greater public good. It was to challenge the system and change the system. And I thank each and every one who has been brave enough to send and execute their ecclesiastical deed poll. But in the cone shell game, in the name game that they do with us, an ecclesiastical deed poll is not the same language as will and testament, even if the intent can be argued as being the same. So the first error is that if it's not called a will and testament, it is not a will and testament. Now let me qualify that even further. There have been some brilliant, and I, and I pay due when due is, is owed, and I pay respect to those that have pioneered many of these areas. And now I pay respect to those that have considered this and known some of this knowledge on the importance of a will and having your will registered while we are obviously alive 
to negate the presumption of being intestate, intestate, but they've called it a living will. Well, if you call it a living will, it's not a will and testament in their system. They're very specific. So what do you call it? You call it a will and testament. You don't embellish it. You don't add to it. You don't subtract it. You don't complicate it. It's a will and testament. That's the first area where a lot of people fall over. What's the second area that people fall over? Your will and testament is not the platform for you to affirm your faith, even though I have enormous respect to each and every one of us that is able to define and stand by their faith. Now, it may well be in our knowledge of Scripture that it is written that the divine creator, God, whatever name you wish to use, granted us dominion as heirs over the planet. I'm in complete agreement with that. But that is outside of the authority that you have in writing a will. God may have done that, but that is not in their system, is not in the intention of a will, the platform. So if you make assumptions within your will over things to which you have no authority, you're creating fatal flaws in your will. Remember, a will is merely to appoint the executor, to define your claims of right, to nominate the beneficiaries, and to list the rules of administration. Now, if you nominate the rules of administration being the canons of one heaven, guess what? I, I, again, I get flack for this, but I keep saying it. The, the, the principles of the canons of one heaven, the principle of one heaven is to validate and strengthen our faith, not to weaken it. If you identify yourself as a Christian, then I assume then that it's because you follow Christ. Otherwise, why, wouldn't you call your, why would you call yourself a Christian? And if you follow Christ, it is you believe the words of the leader, Jesus Christ. Now, if, if you don't consider those words primary, then I would call you a, a, a Biblian. And that is you apply the other words that are not ascribed to Jesus Christ as being more important than Jesus Christ. You can't have it both ways. You're either a Biblian or a Christian. But if you look at the coming of one heaven and you are a Christian and you dearly want to make sure that your faith is affirmed in your will and testament, then the rules of administration have embedded within them all that affirmed without you having to explicitly state it and create a flaw in your will. There's another example of the strength of the canons and the importance of the canons. So these, these are flaws, key flaws that people put in. They change the name, living will, they don't call it will and testament, they call it something else. They uh, get into and describe uh, their act of faith they describe claims, presumptions, all that are outside of the authority uh, that they have in terms of defining their will. And of course, the most important uh, mistake, apart from missing out those rights that you have, is to not include the rules of administration. In fact, the absence of the rules of administration in a will is the single biggest flaw of wills. Okay. So we've now defined, and let's just recap where we're at before we talk about how do we get hold of a form of will and, and how do we go about recording the will and what does this mean? What we've said is overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly it appears that the public face of what we've been describing now for some time where the system declares us dead is the presumption of us being intestate from the age of seven onwards. The repudiation of that, the refutation of that, is to ensure that a valid will is recorded and executed as a deed. And that provides us all the proof we need that we are the general executor of the estate, prove our claims of right, 
improve the beneficiaries, improve the rules of administration by which we live by, by which the estate is managed. Now, how do we get a template in terms of a valid will? This is something that we will be doing as part of the update to the material on one heaven, and that will be going to the various court sites. Now, the list of websites for Eucadia, this was a question asked last week, is, if not already up on, will be up on UK, uh, University of Eucadia. There's a list there of the 60 or 70 plus sites, including the court sites. This will be the last week you see on One Heaven the direct references to specific remedy. From next week, it'll all be located, including the template for a will on the various court sites. Now, how do you register? And where do you go to register? There is some debate because this is slightly different in different jurisdictions. But generally speaking, if one was to follow a lawyer <laughs> and watch what they do, then normally, normally, wills are executed as deeds by having them recorded with the recorder of deeds, usually at a county or a council or a city level. Someone with the authority that we described the other day, the town clerk. Remember, the town clerk is also the clerk of the guardians, is also the clerk of the peace, is also the clerk of the magistrates, is also the agent of the clerk of the privy council, and of course, is most importantly the registrar of the court of public record and the recorder of deeds. So generally speaking, that is the level one only needs to go to to have a will recorded. And when it is recorded and executed, then that is effective across the entire Roman cult system. Now, to make it simpler, we will make sure that our knowledge on that is clear and some may have some additional information that they might want to provide on it. So in a nutshell, this is an important validation of our discussions in the last few weeks of how do we establish in this system that we are truly the general executor of our estate? How do we refute these key presumptions that they still use against us? How do we identify to them the rules by which we live by so that these presumptions that we continue to uh, operate as a slave to Rome can be ended. Those discussions, I believe, we have addressed very clearly tonight in this latest and I think extremely important information. Now, we will have a template up, and there's only a week, and we will have information up on this. And there was some discussion whether I should raise it tonight or we should leave it. But it is a constant theme at the risk over time of even potentially providing contradictory information as information evolves. But it has been a constant theme that whenever knowledge is obtained, whenever inspiration is provided, to share it with you without condition, without price, without any ulterior motive, that you may know what we have found and you may share, discover, validate or repudiate what we're sharing. So that is tonight the section on intestate and wills. Though in the time provided, I want to talk about warrants. Might seem a bit of a letdown after talking about that. But warrants is a very serious issue, even though I appeared, might have been chuckling then. It, warrants is a very serious issue. And I've been asked to talk about warrants in the past, and I think it's high time we talk about it. So I'm going to ask those on the call and those that will listen later to go to Article 290 of Positive Law under one-heaven.org, Canons of Positive Law, Article 290, to talk about warrants. And you might want to update this uh, page by going to refresh it if you haven't already. Now we've spoken about warrants before, but 
there's a key thing that was missed. And it came about from the discussion on what 